Hey guys, this is a quick Delphi update ahead of today's live trial coverage. So as many of you know, I am live streaming gavel to gavel, moment one to the final verdict of the Leilani Simon trial in Chatham County, Georgia. And in the breaks of that trial, which there are many, including a rather long lunch break, I've been doing Delphi updates as they happened. So yesterday I did a short summary video of things that had gone on that people might have missed. You know, the bombshell information needed to have a video of its own. Well, there's been another order by Judge Francis Gull that happened after I got off my live stream yesterday. I will be live on this channel from uh, 2.15 my time, which is 9.15 Eastern. Over on Michelle Walks, I will be live streaming the entire Sarah Boone trial, which could end jury selection today and then go into opening statements. Otherwise, opening statements will be tomorrow. So that's a very fluid situation. But as soon as I know when that trial is going to start, I'll set up a live over on Michelle Walks for those interested in Sarah Boone. So streaming two trials at once. Bear with me. It's a difficult task, but we managed to stream the um, pre-trial hearing yesterday for Sarah as the trial for Leilani was ongoing. So it wasn't too bad, and uh, I think it's going to be okay doing that. All right, so this is the order that Francis has given the media. <laughs> I find it very interesting that Wish TV tried in vain once again to get cameras in the courtroom, and she denied it. But this is in addition to that. So the court, having had the News Media Coalition's motion to inspect public trial exhibits filed 30th of September 2024, under advisement, now issues its order addressing the media's complaints as follows. Because the media wanted to see the trial exhibits. Right? They, they wanted her to release the trial exhibits that have come out so far, you know, in the pre-trial stuff. So the hearing conducted in Carroll Circuit Court on July 30th to August 1st was open to the public and the media and in fact attended by members of the media as well as the public. At said hearing, well over a thousand pages of exhibits, documents and photographs were submitted by the parties in support of their respective positions. At the conclusion of the hearing on August 1st, 2024, the court took the matter under advisement. The court indicated it would take approximately 30 days to issue its rulings on the multiple motions which were heard. The media immediately, on August 2nd, demanded access to the exhibits. Well, they're there in the public domain, so why shouldn't the media have access to the exhibits? It's not like they could take photographs of things that were presented in court because they're not allowed the forms in there. The cameras are not allowed in, so I don't think it's um, a tall order for the media to say, Let's see those exhibits, which are now in the public domain. Let's see them. This was an unreasonable request, though, says Francis, as the court had just taken the matter under advisement the previous day, and the court needed absolute access to the exhibits to review and make a ruling. The court would note that this murder case is one of over 300 pending cases on this court's docket. Well, if she's too busy to do a trial properly, why didn't she just recuse herself? <laughs> With approximately 30 of those cases being murder cases. She's presiding over 30 murder cases all at the same time. Seriously? Is she? The court would know. So it's her, her court, her rules. She's clearly too busy. She's spread too thin. This is a problem with her control freak. She should have recused herself from this case. It was too much for a person with her caseload. All right. The court and the court reporter have worked into the evenings, oh boo-hoo, and on the weekends to comply with the demands made by the media. Of the well over a thousand pages of exhibits, documents and photographs, several of the photographs were admitted into evidence as confidential by agreement of the parties due to the extreme graphic nature of the photographs. Yes, any exhibit that was um, confidentially shown, then no, 
what the media is talking about is the ones that are public access, which is the majority of them. So they should have had access to them. The court has identified dozens of exhibits which are not accessible to the media or the public as they contain employment, personnel records, medical records, mental health records, financial bank records, records containing social security numbers and dates of birth, autopsy reports, work product of council, depositions containing confidential exhibits and reports which were marked by the creator of the report as confidential. Look, Francis likes to control everything. So why didn't she have some kind of system where the stuff that was confidential could be in one pile and the public stuff be in another. I don't know. I don't know. Or request counsel on both sides, redact those pieces of information before they're made public. Surely that should have happened. Surely if an exhibit is marked public, then it would already or it should have already have been redacted those kinds of personal information. I don't know. I'm not a judge. I'm not an attorney. I'm just speaking common sense, am I not? All right. Anyhow, the court has obtained the services of a senior judge to supervise the review of these exhibits, which are accessible to the media. Oh, so she got a friend to come and help her. Why didn't she do this sooner? Even better, recuse yourself, Francis. There's still time. The senior judge, Judge Marianne Voorhees, has indicated she will make the exhibits available to the media on Tuesday, August 22nd, 2024, at 10 a.m., so in five days' time, at a location in the Allen County Courthouse located in Fort Wayne. So this is why the trial is going ahead in Carroll Circuit Court. So all the media is focused on Carroll County Courthouse, and she's expecting now the media to travel all the way to Fort Wayne to see these exhibits. Why have they not been brought to Carroll County? Why are those exhibits still in Fort Wayne? It's an open question. So now the media is going to have to travel all the way to Fort Wayne to view these exhibits. The media is also demanding access to the exhibits which will be introduced at the trial commencing October 18th through November 15th, 2024. At the conclusion of each day, the court will allow the media access to these exhibits for 15 minutes. 15 minutes! She's a control freak. These are public access documents. They should have been redacted, all personal information already, by the parties, and they should be ready to be made public. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This is a public trial that she's, you know, kept behind closed doors, and now she's trying to control the public's access. Uh, I've got questions. Is she going to allow the media to take photographs of the exhibits? I bet she's not. I bet she's not, so I bet we don't get to see them. I don't know, though. It doesn't say anything, because that's just, that's just it. So I'm sure we've all got questions about this control freak judge. We've all got questions. But anyway, <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments below. And hopefully I'll see you 2.15 my time on this channel, which is 9.15 Eastern, whatever that is in your local time. I'll put the schedule up in a little while so that you'll be able to tell what time that is in your local time. All right. Bye for now, guys. See you soon.